from the 36 Chambers. <laughs> it's the Goose. Take, how did you take Biggie from Ashy to Classy, man? Oh, uh, man, it, it wasn't that hard. He always wanted to really be fly. He had some sensibilities, and I think it came from, you know, just, um, you know, the, the Brooklyn style at that time, you know, um, as far as with the polo heads. And you, the cats from Brooklyn had a certain type of style that the rest of New York was emulating with the Timbs and the, and the Chucks and um, just, you know, the Ralph Lauren. So he had got like a taste of it, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Of 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 of, sh of, sh of knowing a luxury name of knowing Gucci and then you know he always had the problem where it wasn't in his size so you know um shout out to five thousand one and all the other tailors that we was able to find that you know we was able to you know really really get him get him real drippy and he he was basically like I want to dress like a skinny nigga I want to dress like you so um, <laughs> you know I was in the suede's and leathers and Versace's and. He was just like, you know, get, when you order, order two of each, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but but he was he was fly on his own. So it was just like a great time, you know, in fashion. And as Ho said, you know what I'm saying, starting with Brooklyn Mint, you know what I'm saying? He had fashion was a big, big part of his shit, the way he looked. And 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 that was kind of that was like hot, kind of Harlemish of him. Yep. Yeah. You know yeah. So that's kind of how we always connected. Like, his gear had to be right. You know, I love my Brooklyn niggas, but sometimes, you know, you know, y'all Yo, yo, easy, 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 easy. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Whatever that next statement going to be, easy, easy. Yeah, yeah. Brooke, sometimes. Sean is Sean, man. Hey, yo. No, he he saves me all the time. I'm I'm just going to say, I'm going to say, no, nah, nah, go big, in, Puff. Come big, on, baby. Really, yeah. No, nah, nah, I'm saying, like, yo, you know, cats from Brooklyn, it, it was also known as they was rough and rugged. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, when, when he was getting a little bit flamboyant and shiny, and he, you know, it was something that was uh, that was surprising. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me to, to, to see a Brooklyn cat want to get as shiny as I was getting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Coming from Harlem. Puff, what a and he, you know, he was with the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was with the shits. And as Joe said, it was like, yo, he just, he just blew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was just like, it was like from one night to the next. You know what I'm saying? But how did you get there musically, Puff? Like a lot said, like you had to push him in the beginning to make records like Juicy, like make those hit records. Like how did you guys tap into like he realized he wanted to be, you know, go from the underground king to like king worldwide, like we were saying. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know about the jazz influence myself till I really watched the documentary. And I think that really played a part in it. It wasn't really a hard conversation. The thing I told Big, I said, the thing you have over everybody is melodies and that you funky. I was like, these cats maybe could spit, but they, 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 they not as funky as you. You know what I'm saying? And um, when he came, he was rhyming 160 bars. And so once, you know, once I kind of sh showed him song format, I think he already had the format in his head and didn't realize like the, the you know, he, he didn't realize the equation, how to put it together. But as soon as he put it together, it was like a beautiful mind and he put it together and it was over. Yeah. It was like one conversation and all those choruses came and all of those things just came. And they just came like. But you know what? You but know you know what? what, like, you know what amazes like, like out of nowhere. But you know what amazes me, and everybody could jump in on this. Like, ready to die. Obviously, he's a he's a great rapper. But life after death, he takes it lyrically. Everything, his flow, everything goes to a whole other level, like a whole other stratosphere. Like, I th it's a rare that you see a rapper get that better between albums as an artist. Like, like what was that evolution like, Puff, or or anybody want to jump in? Like, do you, do you guys hear it that way? Like lyrically, like the monster he started becoming and how he started to evolve even stronger. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak on it from being there firsthand real quick. Don't let everybody else talk about how they were influenced. Um, yeah, it, 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 it was like he had an extra amount of confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody is going to be, you know, is, 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 is going to feel out their first game. So it's like he had his first game on Ready to Die, and then after that, he just knew who he was. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, it's something about, like, when Hove raps, he knows who the fuck he is. 
when Nas raps, he knows who he is. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick, they know who the fuck they are right then and there. On the first one, he knew who he was, but he ain't know he was what he was on the second one, though. But the first one's real raw. So it's like, it's like he reminds me of Miles Davis. I would say the second one would be Bitches, you know, um, Bitches, bitch, what is it? Bitches Brew. You know what I'm saying? When he came back with all them ill styles and everything. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, you know, also he was a super student, right? So you figure, like, rap was just growing at that time, too. Remember, we was just trying to rap music. We ain't having no song structure. We just rapping a thousand bars, just trying to rap better than the next person. Rap, rap hadn't hadn't figured out a strong his song structure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like if you th- look at all those early records, they didn't have like great big choruses and um, um, and then like you know, Chronic came and all that. And him being a student and all that was like, oh, okay, I see where y'all trying to go with this. And 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 you know, and his puff knows this as well. Like Big knew exactly what he was making on um, Life After Death. Yeah. You know, he was like, "Oh no, I got it. I got this. Like this album is gonna be my biggest album ever." And, like he had it. He knew exactly what he was making. You know, when you get in that zone, and um, and you got that information, you know, it, it's it's very difficult. It took me three hours. Yeah. Like when I when I figured out that hard knock life, like in that whole thing, I was like, "Oh, I got it now. I I know exactly where." you know, where I could take this. He figured that out immediately. And then by the second album, you know, maybe one of the best double albums ever. Like, it, every song was incredible. Yeah. The one that sticks out to me is More Money, More Problems. I think that that stood the test of time. Like, I can make the argument that it's, like, might be the greatest rap song of all time. Like, I remember Puff, you played it for me at The Source. While I was a music editor, you played it. And I remember, I speak back then, like, when you were sampling things like Donna Rush, you were catching a lot of heat for that. And But then when you played that record, to me, it was like, undeniable from jump like can you talk about that record more money more problems in the creation of it yeah it was so crazy that it's 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 actually like a hard it's 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 it's, it's a hard record you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? It, even though it gives a celebratoriness but the more money more problems was an example of really he, he could only make music that was coming from his heart it wasn't like he heard a diana ross record i knew i could give him the shiniest record you know what I'm saying? That would make people feel good and, and he'd be able to still bring it where it was relatable to the people we, we, we were making our music for, which is people in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, that, that, that's, that's a beautiful example of his, his song arrangement, of his artistry, and also that other side of him, too, where he, he could flow at that frequency because he was, really, he was really a cat that just wanted to really have fun. You know what yeah. I'm saying? All the time. He wasn't like, oh, this big, black, heavy, dark gangster. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? He was just like, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was like the cat in your crew that keeps you laughing, the funny, funny cat, but also like the quiet, you know what I'm saying? The, the cat that's cool that everybody looked up to. So, yeah, yeah cool. man, and more money, more, pro- more money, more problems. That's when he, he had it. Like on the first albums when I was giving him the radio records like Juicy or Big Papa. You know what I'm saying? He was he was into it. He really started to catch his back on the One More Chance remix. You know what I'm saying? And so when he heard More Money, More Problems, it wasn't even like, yo, you need to do this. He heard it out the room. He's like, give me that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no. And I think I think you have like that holy trinity of records that are like big mainstream monsters, but they're, they're hip hop credible. Like you can't front them. And to me, that's More Money, uh, that's Benjamins, and that's Victory. You know what I mean? Like those three records to me are like, they're hard to beat, man. Those are like, <laughs> yeah. hip, 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 hip. you got to put hypnotize in there. Okay, my bad, my bad. Wait, 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 Hove. I remember on the Juan Epstein one, you had talked about. By, by, by the way, oh. by the way, I was there when Biggie made hypnotize. Let's go. I was in the studio with Talk him. About it. That was my claim to fame. <laughs> That's my claim to fame, guys. Tell me, crack. And I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. We was in Daddy's house. Right, <laughs> or if we was in daddy's house and 12 noon, 10 Chinese girls came in looking like the runway models of America. They left at one, at one, 10 black girls came in. They was looking like the number one models in America. Two o'clock, <laughs> 10 Spanish girls came in looking like runway models of America. Three o'clock. <laughs> I mean, this shit was insanity. The, the view, the view, in, the views of Fat Joe. I, I'm not going to elaborate too much. I, what I can say is, 
boy, that was the greatest day of my life watching him do hip shots. <laughs> Did you know it was going to be a classic like that, Joe? Did you, did you feel you felt it in the it? Oh, that shit was crazy because the, the beat itself was that Luke and Laura. The... Yo, Puff, how far? Bam, 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 bam. That shit was like, you knew that shit was shit because he just let that shit bake while he was writing to it. He was letting that shit bake and it was just playing for hours and hours and hours. It wouldn't stop and the shit never got whacked. It just kept. Boom! <laughs> boom! 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 <laughs> boom! That shit was like, oh my god, this shit is. Now nah, that shit was crazy. Yo, Instrumental. That yo, shit Puff, was how crazy. fun? How, yo, Puff, how fun was the video? Oh uh, man, the video was fun. That was like the first time we both tried ecstasy. Woo. Yo, 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 raw in this Twitter call, man. Y'all are wild, man. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I didn't. I mean, it was. It, it was an. It was an experience. You know, what I'm saying? everybody take that. Big, take big, that. Big, hey, yo, hey, yo, Biggie's fifty. Tell us out. We have nothing to hide, nigga. Let's, Biggie's. 50. Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> you know yeah, right. You know, what I'm saying that was a long time ago. It was the first time. It, it was just a little nibble. It was all right. It was a little nibble, <laughs> but we was. We was in extra high, high spirits. This, yeah, this breaking news and shit. Yeah, he's like, Fuck it. on his fiftieth birthday, I want to <laughs> let y'all know that we're gonna drive backwards now. We're gonna drive backwards. We're high. Off yeah, I'm telling. Hey, I'm telling. Real quick, I, I know we talking about life after that. Joe, you you had something to do with uh, notorious thugs, right? I, I wonder if you could speak on that uh, a little bit. I know you mentioned it before in interviews. That's simple. So Biggie. Uh, I got real cool when I came in the game. I got uh, real cool with uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. We were signed to the same label. So I was basically the only guy in New York who really knew them and was really fucking with them like family. But them guys, they went from like, they just started selling like 30 million records. Like they was breaking records. Like they was the biggest. And uh, Big was like, y'all want to do a song with these with your guys? And I was like... No problem. You know what I'm saying? You know, Big, my brother, there's no question. So I need you to get it done. They've been avoiding our calls. So what happened was they was kind of cool. They was cool with Tupac. They already did a song with Tupac. So they didn't want to burn no bridges or whatever. So I had to do some convincing. But believe it or not, they, they're the happiest guys in the world they ever did the uh, Bone and Biggie. So we got them in the studio. We made them rock. And it was the best thing they ever did in their life. Yeah, that, that's one of the best ones in the album, man. Yeah. Crazy. But, yo, Puff, you talk about how, you know, Big inspired you to really step out and take on the challenge of being being an artist yourself. Yeah, that was kind of wild. We were going, I would, like, put together the shows and I would act like the I was the artist. So I would be like, you know, whether it was Jodeci or Mary, I would actually be, like, kind of pantomiming, like, the moves and, like, the bop or whatever it is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm not saying I'm responsible for everybody's whole bop, but I'm just saying, like, you know, just kind of sketching out a vibe for him, you know? And so, you know, as I was doing that, and and, and then I would, I, he was like, yo, I need you to bring me out. I got this idea. Because I, would, I just was in the Versace shirt, like, more on the sideline. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And then um, once once it came time for the tour, but I, but but throughout the shows of Building Bad Boy, I was like the hype man of all the artists, like on some P.T. Barnum. And then um, you know he would just see just the the you know the bag that I would I would get in as a as an artist, you know what I'm saying, just dancing because I had came from being like a backup dancer, so I I had no problem with like kind of filling that role. Yep. And then he was just like, yo, I just see you as an artist. He was like, I got an idea. You know what I'm saying? Why, well, I'm going to write your rhymes and I'm going to manage you. And um, you manage me. And it, it was like we would have these, like, you know, fun conversations. And and then so on on the Get Money remix, like, that verse was actually written for me. And I was just like, man, I mean, this. Is, I was like, I, I don't think I could get it. I don't want to, like, slow up the flow, you know? I was yeah. a little nervous. And then, Wait, um, which verse? Which he verse, Puff? Guns Out Bust em? That one? Uh, um, with a Caesar's verse. Oh, got you. Uh -huh. Yeah, of, of of the um get money remix. Yeah. Um but but um yeah. Um then by Can't Nobody Hold Me Down and by the Benjamins, you know what I'm saying? He had locked me into a bag and by victory, you know, he had he had pushed me all the way in and you know, um I didn't know what would become of it. 
you know what I'm saying? But I know I was like living a dream and I was like with it, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it, you know, it worked out. He saw something in me that, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I probably, and nobody else probably saw in me. Yeah. How do you feel like, you feel like you, you was popping your shit. Like when you would, you'd be so confident rhyming with him or even like on my downfall, you was popping shit on his records and stuff like that. Like, how did he react to that? Did he hype you up on stuff like that? No, 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 no. I mean, I, I, I did whatever I did. I felt, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the studio, like, you know, I, he definitely let me wear the director hat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He definitely let me be Phil Jackson. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was definitely that type of thing, you know, like, you know, le- you know, letting me produce the record. He never really tried to produce the record. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was just like, he was like, you do that. He never was coming to the mixes or was anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, that, 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 you know, that's how they, that, that really went down. So all of the stuff that was just the, the creative sound that I was putting yeah. together, you know, and, um, yeah. yeah, some of my great well-produced records. I want to talk about Victory. Hove, I was saying, I remember on a Juan F scene back in the day, you had talked about you like the arrangement where it's like Biggie's doing like a mic check, but then Puffy's just rapping and setting the record off. Like, you talk about your feelings about that song? Oh, yeah. It's one of my favorite moments. Um, and it's one of my favorite moments from them. Two, 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 two of my favorite moments when um, they're singing uh, uh, the Play a Hater song. The, just the just the amount of fun that it felt like they were having that day in the studio, and the moment where um, he Puff is rapping and Big is in is like in the background adjusting the mic, like turn the mic up a little bit, <laughs> like just the confidence for the person rapping to allow that to happen. Almost like when when uh, when they say a uh, Basquiat and uh, uh, Warhol, you know, when they did their collaborations, uh, Warhol would always go first, and then that that last series of paintings. You know, you see the boss guy drawing over his. It was a sign of their trust that he let he he allowed uh, uh, Warhol to paint over him. So for Puff to allow him to speak, you know, as he was rapping, it was just like you know a, a metaphor for their relationship. And and as a listener, I was like, this shit is like some of the illest shit I've ever heard. It was just so free form, and it was uh. And but by the way, and then when that song drops and he start rapping, it's like that shit is like a time. Yeah. Off. Puff, you talk about putting that record together? Yeah, um I I um he Big, Biggie had wrote the whole I like kinda wrote the whole song for me and and was like um you know, go wherever you feel. And and I was I was still the first time I did the vocals was um, in L.A. like two nights before he had passed away, mm. and um, you know so so I had I had the reference of it, and um, and 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 you know I was I was in the studio I remember I was in the studio you know doing it by myself, and I was like I I started to drop because it used to have all the drums. So then I started to drop out different pieces and I, I went and separated all the pieces of Rocky and I kind of replayed them. Mm. And, and, and that's kind of what started to give its, its magic because Rocky, that victory is from the theme song of Rocky. Yeah. And so it gives you that uplifting thing. And then, you know, I had to finish it. I finished the record though after he had passed away. Wow. And um, yeah, it, it really was something that kept me going, you know what I'm saying? Like how I did Missing You, I did that after, you know, you know, I was blessed to be able to have music to go back to, because I really was like, yo, I don't even want to like do any of this no more, like, you know? And it was just so overwhelming for me, you know what I'm saying, being young. Yeah. And it was just like, yo. And then, um, you know, when, when I did the Missing You and I was able to release and express myself on that record, and then, and then I went and recut the vocals in Daddy's house, and really expressed myself. Like, and when you hear at the end, what am I going to do now? What the fuck am I going to do now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because that's that's just it. Was, it was just even right now. It's like, man, it's, it's so surreal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like being on this phone and hearing Hove and hearing this and talking about Biggie, hear, hear homeboy that wrote the book and the impact. I'm like. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. it's 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 such a beautiful story, man. And I, I miss him so much. But it's such a beautiful story, the impact that he's been able he's been able to have on the game. Yep. And even 
even, you know, me and Hove, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the impact that he had on us to get to here. So he's responsible for so many things, as my man was saying. But then also he's like responsible for me and Hove. That's like crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, that, that's what that man did. So happy birthday to the boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the show is still here. Yeah, like Hope, how did you how did you deal with processing that loss? And like I always say, like you also then took on the challenge of like, you know, ascending the great heights, right? Like I felt like you know you always paid homage to your your brother Big, you paid homage to Pac, and you sort of took on that challenge of like trying to be our leader in the space, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, personally, you know, that was that was that's that's a tough one, um, because at the same time, you know my brother in like real life and my brother in and and uh and music and companionship and like someone that really push you you know like that's that that's that's a big void missing uh I, you know i don't know if people really like you know really explore that 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 part of it like just as far as like just someone that's you inspired by that that you're gonna push your your art even further yeah. you know that's gone so there's a big void you, you like you're generating and you're making things, you know, on your own now. Um, but as far as like, you know, big and pop and like just pushing forward, that's just me being a student of the game and loving the game and loving the culture and just want to push the culture forward. And I, for me, that's that was the challenge that I was faced with. And, um, you know, that's a void. That's a big void. That ain't, yeah. you know, other... Uh, Others, you know, others stepped in and filled filled it as well. Not just myself, but it was uh, that's a big void. That's 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 the two. That's the the two pillars right there. Imagine that within within a year. Yeah, what, six what, months, right. six months apart. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. It's, yo, yo, I want I, I want to say, bro, you filled them shoes though. You you feel you came in and you 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 know what I'm saying. So we definitely give thanks for you. You know what I'm saying? Because you definitely, you know, came in. Um, and, and I just know how much Big, like, like really looked up to Jay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they That's looked love. up to each That's other. That's you love. know what I'm saying? They looked up to each other. Um, and, yeah, that that is crazy to have to step into the shoes of, like, two people. Because that's all it was, really, was those two people. And they had, like, the game. They They had things on lock. Hove was coming. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But like, you know, it was like these two cats was just so big. You know what I'm saying? And then so it's like to have all of that, like, you know, come on you and, and, and have that responsibility to keep this shit fly and keep the, the art of it going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I think Hove really kept the, you know, not, you know, Hove kept the art of it going and was able to take where they was at and take it, you know what I'm saying, take it even higher. So. Yeah. And even back in the, even back in the era that we're all from with, you know, Fat Joe too, like we we didn't really see hip hop grow like this. We didn't we didn't have a blueprint of like, you know, people evolving and still being so relevant and still impacting culture. Like, you know, y'all inspired me. Y'all knocked down those doors in general, you know. Yeah. It's 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 so crazy because you know, that's what hip hop is built on, us helping each other. So you're hearing stories about people that actually was help helping each other, you know. So Fat Joe getting his first show, like that's huge. Fat Joe with the bone thugs, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's huge. Like everything that we've all like done to like help each other, that's that's the way it was, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of people that played a part in, you know, Biggie and, and people believing in him, you know what I'm saying? And and and, and it's a real it's a family of, of, of real hip hop artists, you know? Um, and, um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's you know, to have I'm everybody a, I'm on a, the call. Yeah, crap. Like, Puff, I'm going to say, say it like this, right? Uh, we be feeling fucked up in days like this. And I don't know if it's some New York shit because I know everybody's listening, but. It's New Yorkers, we be feeling like we got robbed of our God. And so when you see shit like Empire State Building and Metro Cards, yeah. it, it ain't just rappers. It's the whole New York. We feel like, damn, we lost our God, King. You know what I'm saying? The guy who's paving the way, who the only reason we eating is because of a guy like this. 
you know, he showed us a vision of taking it to another level from not just being army fatigue and chucker jackets, but that we could excel to be on another level. And it just, that's just, the, you know, I sat, you know, I sat in my room all day today just thinking about, you know, like how much we was robbed of greatness. And all of us, you know what I'm saying? All of hip hop, the whole world, but for New York specifically, yeah. You know, we feel like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And so that's why we rep them every chance we get, every second of the day. And he's 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 so um so adored, man, and, and revered. He's so that we we just I do I don't know another person that we hold on that highest regard as Biggie. Yeah. Like, you know, don't say nothing about big. Yeah. Like, you know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? I come down right. to my house every day. I got the fucking painting <laughs> on the wall. Biggie. Biggie, the only nigga on my wall. Big ass painting of him. It's like, don't fuck with him. Don't talk to him. He spent Thanksgiving with my family every year. He just like big is with us. Yes, sir. And we're going to always uh, throw up that bat signal for him. That's it, fellas. Thank you, man. Thank you, Fat Joe. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Love. Yeah, yeah. We can wrap it up, man. I appreciate you, Puff. I appreciate you, Hov, man. You guys are super busy, obviously. Thank you for taking the time and sharing your thoughts and your memories and everything right now. And it's we're doing it for big, man. 50. That's right. And thank, That's right. thank, thank you for putting it together, Elliot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Puff. Love. 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 Hov, Hov, any final words, Hov? We get out of here? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I don't want to leave on the sound, but no, I felt like a little sound, but like, because yeah, yeah. you know, we all be very emotional about it, but we also celebrate, you know, his legacy yes, and what he contributed to the game in such a short time. Like, those those albums stand the test of time. Them joints, fam, we playing them last night. You know, like I said, it's Tata's uh, 50th, so we, we was playing those joints last night, and it sounded like they came out yesterday. So the spirit is still here, and we're still celebrating, and we're laughing and having a good time, and we're going to toast to him. We're going again tonight for Todd. So yeah, yeah. Toast again, pop some bottles, and I might throw on some like, little Versace shirt for that. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> got to do it. You know what I'm saying? got to do it. Yeah. Happy yeah, sure. birthday to Todd. Also, happy birthday to Buster Rhymes. I know it's his birthday, too, man. So, yeah, a lot of, yeah. a lot of solid dudes, man. Happy birthday to the to the God Buster Rhymes. The God Buster Rhymes, man. Another, another Brooklyn legend. You know that was the track. Really? That was the the the, uh, the the third one. The third part of the um Western House crew. <laughs> Are you claiming high school now? You claiming school? You went to school? You was good. <laughs> I went. I went four days. I went four days. Learned the, learned a lot. You're expiring young man. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, Hope. Thank you, guys, man. Yeah, I appreciate everybody on the call, everybody that came out to celebrate, you know what I mean? Just tap in. I don't know if we talk too much, and y'all ain't, ain't get a chance to talk, but, you know, you know, y'all y'all got your own little platforms. Get busy, <laughs> girl. Get busy with your platforms. You know what I mean? All right, y'all. Sure. Appreciate your support. All right, Thanks, Hope. All right, peace. Yeah, man. yeah. Right. Yo, thank you, guys, man. Toast to Biggie, 50 years old, man. Happy Heavenly Birthday to B.I.G., Tomorrow, May 21, man. I appreciate everybody checking in. I think we got about 2,500 people. Shout out to the entire title team. Shout out Mel. Shout out Juan. Shout out Jason. Talk to you guys soon, man, for the next Spaces event, man. I ain't going to get guests like this next time, so don't get excited, man. <laughs>